And Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller came along. They did all kinds of things. Lester Sill and myself and Mike Stoller started a little record company in uh, L.A. Very underfinanced. Called Spark Records. The guys at Atlantic Records had heard our, our stuff. They got a hold of us and they said, look, you know, you, you're not selling any meaningful amount of records. They uh, convinced us to make records for them that they could sell. The first big success we had was Searching and Youngblood. I've been searching. two Jewish kids that knew my culture better than most blacks knew that culture. And they amazed me. I would look at them like, who are you guys, man? How do you know how to write this kind of stuff? And it's true of what you're writing about. But it so happened they knew it, and it was correct and right on time. We used to live a semi-black existence. In fact, we thought of ourselves as black. Um, we were mistaken, but <laughs> that's what we wanted to be. We aspired to be uh, black and to to be able to make the music that was black and the poetry that comes from blues music. We had black girlfriends. We used to uh, constantly be in uh, totally black nightclubs and dance halls. And we were treated very courteously. I mean, sometimes people were amused you know, that uh, we might have been the only white faces in the joint that night, but no, no one was ever rude or aggressive or anything. <laughs> <laughs> 